The Wright Brothers Flyer One, Grover Loning's Amphibian, and Leroy Grumman's F-3F. A legacy of innovative aircraft design passed down from the father of aviation himself, Orville Wright, to his protege, Grover Loning. A legacy that Leroy Grumman would continue and infuse with his own, leaving an indelible mark in both aviation history and world history. Leroy Grumman was driven by his experiences as a test pilot to transform aviation design. He developed a motto of build it strong, keep it simple, make it work. His company, the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation, later the Grumman Aerospace Corporation, would become one of the most influential aircraft and aerospace establishments. Under his leadership, Grumman would produce fighter planes that would help turn the tide in the Pacific during World War II, develop lunar modules that would ferry men to the moon, and challenge competitors to meet his high standards. His legacy is immortalized by his renowned aircrafts, and his leadership remembered and respected to this day. Leroy Grumman began his company in 1929 with the supporting guidance of his mentor, Grover Loning. And Loning agreed with the young engineer, Grumman, that, yeah, build it stronger. We'll get a bigger motor. And they did together. And he took him under his wing. He would continue the Loning tradition of the amphibian plane with the JF Duck and the J2F Duck. Grumman began designs for his own aircraft, earning a contract with the U.S. Navy, who was impressed by his innovations. Leroy Grumman patented a retractable landing gear in 1932 and produced the first Navy fighter to have a successful retractable undercarriage, the FF-1. His design created new opportunities in aviation by reducing drag and increasing speed. This idea was further improved by other engineers and is still seen today in most aircraft. Grumman would continue transforming aviation by developing the first Navy fighter with an enclosed cockpit, the FF-2, providing pilots with more protection. The Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation started to gain a reputation for quality and ingenuity that would only flourish. Grumman was a man eager to take on challenges. He devised a solution to the Navy's cramped aircraft carrier decks. He invented the stowing that reduced wingspans by more than half for storage without compromising structural integrity. His development increased carrying capacity by 60%. The F-4F Wildcat, F-6F Hellcat, and TBF Avenger was equipped with this design. These aircraft fully embodied the Grumman motto, and in World War II would prove invaluable. Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal wrote that Grumman airplanes are largely responsible for saving the most important foothold in the Pacific. The Wildcats held the line when the going was toughest. Foster Haley, a New York Times correspondent, adds the Grumman Wildcat to more than any single instrument of the war to save the day for the United States and the Pacific. The Wildcat and the Hellcat were the first fighters that were able to combat the Japanese Zero, which destroyed all of their opponents. Hellcat shot down 369 Japanese aircraft in one day. The Avenger Bomber, the first single-engine aircraft with a turret, had 30 submarine kills and sunk the battleship EA in Guadalcanal. Forrestal believes Grumman saved Guadalcanal. In addition, Grumman planes fought at Midway Island, Wake Island, and the Eastern Solomons. Grumman was instrumental to the victory in the Pacific, earning Grumman great respect. Leroy Grumman's designs changed history and renewed pride and interest in aviation. While the Grumman Aircraft Engineering Corporation downsized post-war, Grumman continued to revolutionize aviation. Leroy helped contrive the first variable swing-wing aircraft with General Dynamics, the F-111 Ardmark. When other engineers couldn't construct a swing wing that didn't affect performance, Grumman could. He continued his tradition of modernizing aviation and making the ideas of others a reality. Among his Cold War successes were the A-6 Intruder and the F-14 Tomcat. The A-6 provided air support and destroyed targets from the Vietnam War to Bosnia in 1994. The 1970 F-14 used a variable swing wing design as a supersonic fighter aircraft and was utilized for reconnaissance and defense until Operation Iraqi Freedom, where it conducted 1,163 attacks. In the tensions with the Soviet Union during the Cold War, Grumman's superior aircrafts, like the F-14, acted as a deterrent. One of Grumman's most notable accomplishments is the design of the lunar module that would transport astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface. It was a huge undertaking, and the company was under immense pressure fail, and Americans would never walk on the moon while the Soviets advanced in the space race. If we fail, uh, we're going to close down the moon. Mm -hmm. But with the lunar module, it had to be so light in that we only had the, the computer system, which is very, very primitive, and uh, the only backup system was the hand fly that machine. Mm -hmm. And um, they did that. 
The successful design of the lunar module allowed Neil Armstrong to be the first man to walk on the moon. The design was the essence of the Grumman, taking on challenges and defying constraints. The newly renamed Grumman Aerospace Corporation allowed man to explore space time and time again and paved the way to future space technology. Grumman inspired an entire world to explore aeronautics. The Grumman Aerospace Corporation would not have achieved what it did without Leroy Grumman's leadership, vision, or expertise. Grumman was unlike any other president of an aviation company. He wanted Grumman to be a family company. He took care of his workers and accommodated to their needs. He would even fund medical care for workers' families. The company was founded on equality and respect, and Leroy was known to work on planes with the workers or play softball with them. The big theme in the early days was a family company. We're all together here. Help each other out, build a better product. Grumman's role as a leader was not just to lead, but to encourage. He inspired his workers with his determination, calm demeanor, and engineering astuteness. But he was well, well liked. He says, well, if this is what you want, I think my company can do it. They had the utmost respect for him. Grumman was not afraid to take on a challenge like the Lunar Module, and Grummies were proud to work for a prodigy like Leroy Grumman. The most important part of Grumman's leadership was carrying on a legacy, the legacy of Orville Wright and Grover Loning. But Orville Wright was like a man who respected talent, expected craftsmanship and quality. He saw that in Grover Lowing, and he says it's about time we start educating officially, you know, with the universities. He pushed that. Low, and with that, from Oval Wright to uh, Grover Lowing, Grover Lowing was the same thing. He, he saw in Leroy Grumman and, and, and two other men the same as Orville saw in him, and he did the same thing. He helped them. Get, their own business. Leroy Grumman saw in others right down the line. Yeah. And that's amazing. These young engineers, like Grumman and, and uh, Grover Loin, used to go to their mentors and sit with them and say, I got this idea, what do you think, uh, Mr. Wright? And he would say, you know, you got a good idea, work on it. And then uh, show it to me in a model working. Mm -hmm. Grover Loin did the same thing with Grumman. Well, yeah, Leroy, I understand what you're drawing here, but show me this, that, and the other thing. And, but, but it was a good tradition. He, he had the same idea as the people before him, where he learned, and he carried it on, and that's a legacy. He wanted to carry on the tradition he had experienced and teach the next generation. He started an aeronautical shop, a little bit of aeronautics, how to build structures, how to build structures better. I think he probably went there and taught some of these courses. His worth ethic and leadership didn't cease when he retired as president. His successors carried on a sense of family in the company. Workers would have a godfather or a mentor to provide support. His quiet, motivating leadership and the way workers admired him serves as part of the incredible legacy of Leroy Grumman. Leroy Grumman's legacy is his aircraft and the company he made. His legacy is how he is remembered as a skilled engineer and a caring president, and the expectation behind the Grumman name. Grumman's retractable landing gear, stowing, and variable sweep wing transformed aviation. His contribution cannot be understated. His durable planes and genius designs forced rivals to compete with him, furthering aviation development. His aircraft set the standards of aviation. Grumman aircraft have participated in almost every conflict since the inception of the company. Although Leroy retired from the company in 1972, his workers still embodied his motto. Every design still loves up to build it strong, keep it simple, make it work. Every design was infused with the history of hard work and attention to detail that Grumman wanted. A history dating back to Orville right in his legacy that Grumman continued. Despite the company's move from Long Island, Long Islanders honor his memory and his contributions. Grumman was one of the largest employers on Long Island and boosted Long Island's economy, as well as inspire Long Island youth. The Grumman Aerospace Corporation was a source of pride for the island, and still is to this day. Long Islanders are proud that one of our own had the ability to change history, and even more proud that he was never greedy. Each success was a result of teamwork. Every triumph was a family accomplishment. Long Island Grumman workers helped find the Pacific, send a man to the moon, and ensured America was always protected. Every Grumman victory was a victory for Long Island, and for that, Grumman's legacy will never be forgotten.